up with good YouTube is Gary Brooks with Fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens content daily. Another day of Ravens training camp. So another training camp report come right at you. If you're new to the channel, man, you want to hear about the Baltimore Ravens training camp, anything that's going on, signings and stuff like that. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We cover it all. Um, so we're gonna get right into what happened today at practice. But first, we will talk about some things that's off the field. Now, the Ravens obviously got to make the mandatory cuts to get down to the 85 players. So, one of the first people that they cut would happen to be quarterback Brett Hundley. Now, if we remember, Brett Hundley was originally really only brought here because Lamar Jackson had missed the first part of, like, um, uh, voluntary OTAs. So, they needed a third quarterback. So, you know, at that time, it was only Tyler Huntley and Anthony Brown. They brought Brett Hundley in to be a third arm. But obviously, Lamar came back from mandatory OTAs. He's been here for the entirety of training camp. So they just didn't need four quarterbacks anymore going forward. So they cut Brett Hundley to get down to that three. Now, also what they did was they uh, uh, put Trent Harris on IR. And Trent Harris is a guy that they literally just signed maybe a couple days ago. So I'm not sure if this IR is just like an IR and stash kind of thing or he was hurt on something behind the scenes because I didn't see a practice report of him being injured. So I'm not exactly sure what went on with that, but he is on IR at the moment. All right. Now, we do want to mention that J.K. Dobbins and Marcus Peters had short practices today, but nothing to be alarmed about. That's a part of their recovery process. That's a part of their rehab program. The Ravens are doing this thing uh, all season, especially where they're being very, very cautious with players who were injured and bringing them back slowly. They're bringing these guys back slowly. So when the regular season comes around, they're ready to go at full tilt. No, no restrictions. Okay. Now, who did return today? Bailey Gaither and David Sharp. So one, one wide receiver came back, one offensive tackle. Uh, Nick Boyle had a veteran day. So the Ravens are also doing this thing with Nick Boyle where he'll practice for a couple days, set out for a day, and then come back kind of doing them like that. Um, it seems to be working just fine. Nick Boyle hasn't really missed any days that weren't expected for him to miss. Okay. Now, the regular people that are injured are still hurt. You know, Proche, Tyler Wallace, Leonard Baum, all those kind of guys. I'll have, the, I'll have the screenshot up there, but who's still injured? All those regular guys are still hurt. Now, a new injury that happened today, uh, Daniel Falele had a really good game versus the Titans, but apparently he left practice about an hour in. I'm not sure exactly what the injury is 100%, but hopefully he's okay and there's something minor and we can get him back out there on the field. All right. So, now let's get into it. What happened today? Um, apparently, it was a sloppy day for the offense. We're just going to be 100% honest about it, Okay. We're talking about drops, penalties, and just not overall sharpness in the red zone. Yesterday, they was killing it in the red zone. Very sharp. Touchdowns, I think it was Victor and, and Andrews and people like that. I think they might have, might have caught one as well. But today, it wasn't that same kind of efficiency, okay? Now, uh, who had the drops, right? It wasn't just him alone, but Rashad Bateman had two drops today. Um, he had a drop yesterday. So, we don't want this to become a pattern. But Sean Bateman has good hands, so I'm not worried about that aspect of it. It seems to me it could just be a concentration thing. you got to be fully locked in, look the ball in. Rashad Bateman knows that he's a professional. Um, so I'm not 100% worried about that, but it's not something that you want to constantly hear. All right, now this is two days in a row. Hopefully tomorrow's practice we can get no drops out of Rashad Bateman, and that'll be that. Um, everybody's, like I said, everybody's entitled to a rough practice. It is what it is. Um, but the offense, especially the receivers, you got to you gotta catch the ball. It's the number one part of the job, all right? Um, yesterday, apparently, was a tough catch. They didn't really describe these two drops today. If they were tough catches, easy catches, or, or whatever would it, would it be. But at the end of the day, your job is to catch the ball, so we got to make it happen, all right? Now, it's not, it wasn't all negative about Bateman. He did have a long catch today. So, once again, kind of like yesterday, you know, he had a drop, but then redeemed himself with a long catch. He did the same thing today. So, it's it's up it's up and down the last couple of days for Rashad Bateman. If we're going to be completely honest, it's been up and down. We just need a little bit more consistency, all right? Because there was a couple of days ago where he was the star of the training camp practice. He couldn't be guarded, couldn't be touched, and you know he was killing dudes out there. Now we get a couple of days where it's inconsistent, some drops here and there. So we just need Rashad Bateman. It's only his second year, but you got to be consistent out there, all right? You got to be consistent, all right? Now another player who's having a good couple of days is Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay caught a 70-yard uh, touchdown pass from Lamar Jackson. And on top of that, what he had yesterday was like another 50, 60-yard catch yesterday. So he's stacking days. This wide receiver two battles going back and forth, back and forth. When Devin Duvernay was out, James Prochet was taking the lead, playing lights out, playing really well. 
Now with James Prochet out, Devin DuVernay's descended. So, honestly, I know. Ravens fans, if you want to add a receiver, I want to add a receiver. So don't don't think I'm, I'm not one of those guys who don't. I'd have to do, I absolutely do want to add a receiver. But we have to give credit to when these guys are playing well. And Devin DuVernay and, and uh, Devin DuVernay, excuse me, and James Prochet have been playing well in practice. We just can't get around that fact. It's being reported on a daily basis. It's not something that's being made up. All right. So now we just need to see them take it from the practice to the games. James Prochet, I saw him do that last year. I saw him have multiple catches versus Denver. I saw him do that versus the Bengals at the end of the season. Devin DuVernay, when he's been on the field, he's been effective. All right. Now we just need that to be the case when they're more focused on by the defense. All right. And we'll see if that's what it's going to be. Um, until then, you know, I'm just going to say good job by the receivers as far as DuVernay and Prochet. Rashad Bateman has got to be a little bit more consistent, and we, we'll be all right. We'll be okay. All right? Now, defense. Now, apparently, defense got better as the day went along. Started off a little slow, but got it going as the day went along. Uh, a good thing is a lot of secondary practice, like a Darius Washington got some run out there, a guy who just came back from injury, so that's good. Like I said, he's kind of he's kind of a little bit behind in the safety battle. So he has some ground to make up, so hopefully he can do that, you know, for, for, for his sake and everything like that. Talented player, so... Um, interested to see how that goes for him. Now, defense got better, but we got to talk about the people who stood out. Uh, Justin Matabiki, Adafi Owe were apparently really dominant on the defensive line in the team drills and especially in the one-on-ones. Uh, Matabiki beat Kevin Zeitler with like a swim move. And then um, I believe they said Owe just went around the outside on uh, Morgan Moses. And then they also got, uh, you know, they also won their one-on-ones later in the practice as well. So Adafi Owe is doing everything to show that he's he's set for a year two breakout. And I'm kind of expecting, like I said, my goal here for Adafi Owe has consistently been nine sacks and up. All right, if he can break up breaking the double digits, that's great. But I needed him to get at least nine sacks this season. I think that's really attainable for the way the defense is going to play, for his skill level, for his for everything that he seemed to be adding to his game from this year, or I mean from last year to this year. He seems like a completely different player. I can't wait to see him on uh, the actual field and see what it looks like live game reps. Uh, Matabike, same thing. We've been waiting for Matabike. Last year, I thought it was going to be a breakup, but maybe it's, maybe we were a year too early. Maybe that's this year. The interior defensive line has a lot of talent, and he's a part of that. Um, he'll be able to stop the run. He's strong, things like that. But if he can add that pass rush capability, that's what's really going to take him to the next level. So that's what I'm looking for from Justin Matter BK. Overall, that's pretty much the, the practice report for today. Now, I believe they said this is the second to last open practice. Um, so tomorrow will be the last practice, I believe, open to the public. And then I think the Ravens um, are going to close it down for a little bit. I know they're going to Arizona for a couple of days before their preseason game on Sunday to practice out there. So we'll see what happens out there. Um, it's your boy Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.